Hi guys, it's James back again with another video. And this one was I was all set to do a, a sequel to another one of my videos, uh, which I like to do. Uh, it was going to be, it started out as uh, Top 10 Zombie Films Part 2. And I had that list done with a few on there that I don't know that I was entirely sure about or confident about. And then I was thinking about a couple other films, so I started to put them down and tried to slot them into another list. Excuse me. But I only had a few. And so I thought I'd take a f those few from one list and the majority of the zombie list, add another few, and then I made this list, which would be the first, uh, third, third video in a series. And this is uh, Hidden Gems Top 10 Horror Films Part 3. <clears throat> the, one, the one I had the most for was the zombie film list, not like body horror. I did the slasher films and other ones, but I like the idea of doing a third part for this. So, here we are. <clears throat> we'll start with number 10. Number 10 is a film from 2009 called The Revenant. Not to be confused with the Leonardo DiCaprio Tom Hardy film from a few years ago. Not anything that is, no, nothing remotely similar about the two movies. This one in, uh, stars David Anders and Chris Wilde. And David Anders you probably recognize from uh, Alias. I'm struggling to remember the character he played in Alias, but you'd recognize him. But he also played John... Uh, it was Elena's uncle in uh, Vampire Diaries. Yeah. So, David Anders and Chris Wilde. I didn't really recognize any of the other actors in it, but it's those it's those main those two guys. And David Anders plays uh, Gregor, uh, Bart Gregory, and he's a second lieutenant in the army, and he gets killed. And he gets killed, they bring him back, they bury him, and then for whatever reason, he comes back to life, crawls out of the grave, and goes to his was it his apartment? No, he goes to he goes to the be his best friend's apartment, and played by Chris Wilde, and his best friend's blown away by how, how the hell is, how the hell are you back? And they start researching researching the stuff because apparently when daylight comes around, he like falls completely dead asleep, unconscious, and then revive comes back comes back to the world of the living, I guess, at night. But he also needs blood to survive. Otherwise, he'll start to desiccate and like decompose. So they they theorize that he's somewhere between a vampire and a zombie, and, and I guess he's known as a revenant. And they start going out and sort of like solving crimes, fighting crimes, righting wrongs out out in the city. And his friend wants him wants him to turn him into a revenant as well. And of course he refuses, but then in, on one of their little outings he's fatally wounded. And so Bart feeds on him and turns him into a revenant as well. So they end up being two undead guys fighting crime kind of thing. And that's the, base, that's the basis, basis for the movie. It is pretty entertaining. Especially when I think they pull up to uh, beside another car who's harassing them and David Anders ends up taking off his sunglasses and like just give it like freaking the guys out by like gasping at him but he's got like dead eyes and stuff freaks him out they drive away anyway it is pretty it is pretty funny and it was because this was 2009 and I think the other Revenant was from like 2016 maybe so this was several years before that. So when another movie called The Revenant was coming up, oh, I wonder what this one's about, because I have one called The Revenant. So, anyway, that's The Revenant. Okay, number nine. 
we have a film from 2012. Uh, it's a zombie comedy horror film called A Little Bit Zombie. And I believe it's a Canadian film because it, <clears throat> it says it premiered at the Vancouver, the Victoria Film Festival in Victoria, British Columbia. I believe it was shot in Canada. And this one stars... Uh, well, the main guy is played by Christopher Turner. He plays Steve. A lot of some of the cast have been recognized, but I recognize Sean Roberts is in there from Going the Distance and Land of the Dead, and uh, he played he played the main bad guy. <clears throat> I'm struggling to remember the character's name, but he played the main bad guy in the fourth Resident Evil film on the main guy who'd have like the slick back blonde hair and the, and the dark sunglasses. And you've also got Stephen McCaddy and various, various other actors that you may recognize, you may not. I didn't, but anyway, this involves like a guy and his fiance working on their relationship. They decide to go out to the cab, to a cabin to work things out. And his friend played by Sean Roberts and his girlfriend show up, come along to they're trying to talk some sense into, sense into him, saying, like, the your, your bride-to-be is not right for you. And while he's there, there, there's a thing at the start of the movie where you get Stephen McCarty and his partner, this woman, and they're, fight, they're zombie hunters. And this mosquito, there's like a point-of-view thing where this mosquito sucks the blood of a zombie and then flies off. And it ends up coming around to the cabin, and biting Steve. So he gets infected with zombie blood through a mosquito and starts to gradually throughout the movie turn into a zombie. And they end up coming into contact with Steve McCaddy and his zombie hunter partner. So they're trying to cope with him turning into a zombie plus keep the zombie hunters at bay. And the, the, it, it, that's the basis for that movie. And it goes on. It's pretty funny. It's a, it's a pretty funny Canadian zombie comedy but the, the what I thought was like the really funny part is and it's not really a spoiler because at the end of the movie um, they end up getting Steven and his Steven and his fiance end up getting married and they show like I think it's during the credits you know, like Polaroids Polaroid shots from the wedding you got like them cutting the cake but occasionally you'll see you see Steve and he's going he's like oh, and he's going towards somebody's head because he's a zombie going after brains like they're pulling them back and they're doing this. They're thinking, oh, he's going for another head and stuff. It's pretty funny. So that one is called A Little Bit Zombie. All right, number eight. We have a film from 2014. Uh, a film by Joe Dante. The guy who did The Burbs and Gremlins and several other movies. Uh, it's a movie called Burying the X. And this one stars... Uh, this one stars Anton Yelkin, Alexandra Dottario, Ashley Green from Twilight, uh, Dick Miller, who's in most of, if not all, of Joe Dante's films. Those are the primary. Well, he, he's more like a small role, but the primary actors are Anton Yelkin, Alexandra Dottario, Dottario, and Ashley Green. And you got uh, Anton Yelkin is, uh, is in a relationship with Ashley Green. And he's a big he's big into comics, the comic memorabilia, memorabilia, horror movie stuff, and she's a very high maintenance, very controlling kind of girlfriend. And he just can't figure out a way to he wants to get out of the relationship. He can't figure out how to break up with her, so he decides to meet her in a public place to break up with her, so everyone can see how kind of off the wall, kind of crazy she is. The problem is. <coughs> um, but because she had also been freaking out, he had he would talk with Alexander Daddario, who runs runs a shop that he frequents, and she's always jealous, thinks they're flirting and stuff like that. Anyway, he's he's on the way, he's there in the park to meet her, and on her way there, she gets hit by a bus and dies. And then he is mourning, and then he be, starts up reconnects with Alexandra Daddario and starts up a relationship with her. 
Well, in the meantime, his dead girlfriend comes back from the grave as a, as a zombie. And she comes back home, and there's even a part in the trailer saying, like, she's back, she's dead, and she thinks we're still dating. <laughs> Anton Yelkin is very funny in this movie. So is Ashley Green as the undead girlfriend or ex-girlfriend. So you've got kind of like the love triangle going on there with two people, two living people and one zombie. So the comedy writes itself. <laughs> it, is, it is a pretty funny movie, though. Burying the X. Number seven, we have a film from 2007, and it's called The Mad. And this is another one of the <clears throat> zombie comedy films that were on the list that actually is the uh, as far as I as far as I know is the first one that uh, uses mad cow disease as the source for the zombie apocalypse well, not so much an apocalypse zombie outbreak because you get these the cows that have mad cow and like they provide local beef for the the town diner the truck stop diner and this one stars Billy Zane, Maggie Castle, uh, let's see, Jordan Maddy, Sean and McDonald. The only ones I really recognize were Billy Zane and Sean McDonald. But you got Billy Zane and his family show up at this truck stop, and people start eating these hamburgers made from this, the beef made from the cows with mad cow disease. And they start, they get infected and start turning into zombies. But there is a lot of very in-your-face humor in this movie. It is very funny. I wasn't expecting much of it. I had a couple movies. I had The Mad and I had The Rage. And I believe these look pretty low quality. I'll watch them because I was going through my huge stacks of horror movies to see which ones I wanted to keep and which ones I wanted to donate. And The Rage I donated because it was, it was okay. The Mad I was very surprised because this, this movie was very entertaining. Mostly because of Billy Zane. Who's a great actor, but also a great comedic actor. And so it's the whole, how do you get out of the zombie zombie outbreak in this local small town truck stop diner? The Mad. Number six, we have a film from 2008, British war horror film <clears throat> called Outpost. And this one stars... Ray Stevenson from the second Punisher movie. A, a British actor, he's been in several things, but that was one of the more high profile movies he did. And you got Richard Brake, who was the initial Night King in Game of Thrones. Um, but he also does a lot of work with uh, Rob Zombie in his films. Michael Smiley. Okay, so this one involves, uh, who is it? You got a scientist slash businessman played by Julian Wadham. I did recognize him. And he hires these mercenaries led by this guy named DC, played by Ray Stevenson, to find this remote, remote military outpost and see if they can... <clears throat> See if they can find what's inside. Cause he does he say what? Yeah, that that that's what they're hired to do. It's like don't ask questions. You're hired to find this bunker and take what's inside. When they get there, they find a whole bunch of bodies, but one person's alive, but in a catatonic state, and they find a bunch of Nazi paraphernalia down there, flags and stuff, and at one point the catatonic guy moves, so they realize, well, he's not, he's not dead, he's not really alive, but he's sort of in a catatonic state, but he may be faking it, and they have people posted outside who start getting shot at by unseen assailants, and as it, what, what it ends up being is, and again, I don't think this is much of a spoiler because it's the reason why they're there, is that the Nazis apparently in World War II <clears throat> had developed a machine 
to a device or a machine to alter reality and prolong life. So you have these undead, undead SS soldiers that are localized to this bunker in the woods surrounding it, and they're protecting what's theirs. And so you have soldiers that appear behind someone and then disappear when they turn around, but they can very much affect the real world. So it's I like movies take play, taking place underground in tunnels and bunkers and stuff. Like I said, with like the the Devil's Rock and stuff. But this one is pretty cool. I watched the sequel, which is El Ghost Black Sun. Didn't think too much of it. And then there's a third one, which apparently is a prequel, but I have not seen that anywhere. I just I like this one, and that's as far as it needs to go. Yeah, I may check out the third one one of these days, but for the moment. Outpost. Number five. Number five, we have a film called Siren from 2016. Now, if you've seen if you've seen the anthology films VHS, VHS 2, and VHS Viral, the first VHS had a segment uh, called Amateur Night. And that was where these, these three guys, these three guys uh, are out on the town and they end up finding this girl taking her back to a hotel room so that they can do whatever co they want to coerce her into or whatever. Get her drunk, have sex with her, whatever. Turns out it's the way worst possible person they could try and pull this on because she's latching onto one of them saying she always she really only says one phrase and that's I like you, I like you. And then if you've seen it, you know she ends up murdering all of them. She her forehead kind of splits open, she's some sort of demon. Now they sort of like what they've done with certain trailers where they expanded the trailer into a movie, like Hobo with a Shotgun or Machete and stuff, they, some of the filmmakers took this segment of the anthology film and expanded it into a feature-length film called Siren, which is her. And they sort of get, they give her a backstory and more people for her to encounter. Now, I don't know exactly where the, where the Amateur Night would fit in in the timeline. I'd have to rewatch both of them. But this one ends up being guys going out for a bachelor party out in the town, and they get word at this bar they're at that we should go to this one place that's out of this world. And they go there, and it's very strange. And you've got, what's his name? I think it's Justin Wellborn, who you've seen in The Final Destination and The Signal and stuff. Plays this guy named Mr. Nix. And he tells them, like, you, the, 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 the groom-to-be, go down to this window, sort of like, the, like a stripper window where the window, the panel goes up and you see the stripper dance. And this one ends up being this woman inside, Han played by Hannah Fearman, who plays the t titular character, Siren, and the one from Amateur Night. And in the meantime, his friends will pay for it. Well, the payment is... Excuse me, Mr. Nix has this has this woman working for him that takes like she has takes off a cap and has these leeches stuck to her head. Excuse me. And uses these leeches on the guys to extract memories from them, and that's their payment. So uh, when he's down there, she ends up singing to him, and when she sings it projects images of every sexual encounter he's ever had in his head all at the same time. But he notices she's also chained up at the ankle, so he br he busts her out of there. And then things sort of spiral from there. She latches onto him, she likes him, and she will possess him. But he's getting married, so he has to sort of work it that this homicidal... Because it turns out Mr. Nix summoned this demon, and this was this girl. And he's the one who controls her, but she's out in the world now and latching on to this one human. And so it's him getting away from her, getting back to his fiance, but Nix is coming after them. So it's very cool. It's much better than I expected. Because I like the VHS films. I, th 
think they're I think they're good, but what they did with this segment expanded into a feature was great. So that is Siren. Number four, we have a film from 2007 called The Signal, which also stars Justin Long. Now, this is not the one from 2014 by William Eubank. No connection between these. This is the one I mentioned before when I referenced uh, this, the movie based on the Stephen King book, Cell, where like a, this mysterious signal comes out and drives everyone insane. Um, this one was made well before that book was even published. So there's no connection between the two. And this is sort of an anthology film. There's like three different directors and three different segments that all sort of interconnect. And it's the same principle that this weird television radio signal goes out over and drives people insane. Now it doesn't end up turning them into like this herd hive mind of zombies like it does in Cell. This just drives everyone batshit insane. And so it chronicles the experiences of three different groups of people uh, throughout the movie. A guy and his girlfriend and these other friends and then these other these other guys and like how everything's going insane. And it's, I'd say it's about as violent as Cell, but in a very different way. Because this is a much more low budget kind of indie film. And that one had a much bigger budget, sort of Hollywood film, but equally good, but only the basis of similar premises. So that is The Signal. Let me see, who, who else is in this one? We've got Justin Wellborn, uh, A.J. Bowen. Yeah, about, about the, the only ones you'd really recognize, I guess. Okay, number three, we have a film from 2009 called Dread. And this was another one that it doesn't, you can't, you don't see it by the cover really, but it is one of the, one of the ones under the banner of the After Dark, After Dark Horror Fest films, which I'm a big fan of. All but one. One called Dark Ride, which I didn't really enjoy at all. All the rest are great. That I've seen. The ones that are under the banner, not the After Dark originals. Those are hit and miss. So this one stars Jackson Rathbone, Sean Evans, uh, Laura Donnelly, Sean, uh, Sean Evans, I had, I didn't, the only thing I, other thing I've seen him in was the Take miniseries with Tom Hardy. Jackson Rathbone, obviously, from the Twilight series, and S. Darko, a movie which I like. Uh, this one's based on a Clive Barker story from his books of blood, like Hellraiser and Candyman and stuff. And this one involve this one involves two two uh, friends at school, Quaid and Stephen, who decide to do a fear study, where they interview people about their deep darkest fe deepest darkest fears and how they cope with them. And Stephen has his own fear from his past, and Quaid does as well. He saw his family get axe murdered, <laughs> and that's messed him up seriously because he decides to take it to another level where he starts using people's fears against them to try and help. He's tormenting them, terrorizing them, but he's using it to help himself cope with his own fear. He's just going about the most sadistic, psychopathic way imaginable. And he is a pretty creepy individual in this movie. And Jackson Rathbone does a good job as sort of like the good guy, the good friend. And girl, the girls in the movie also do a great job. There's one girl with, um, she's got like this birthmark that covers most of her body. It's like this deep purple kind of color. Kind of like, kind of like this shirt. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a creepy film. When, once, you, once you get into it. That is dread. Number two, we have a film from 2016 called Viral. And this is one this is a movie by Ariel Schulman and Henry Joost, who also did Nerve. Um, I believe they did uh, Paranormal Activity 3. And I think, I think they may have done Catfish. I think Catfish may have been their first one, which I wasn't a fan of at all. But the rest of their movies I love. So, and I think I had seen this in Walmart, 
but I never looked closely enough to see that they had direction. Otherwise, I would have picked it up immediately. Found this one on Google Play. I'm like, oh, crap, and it's on sale. I'm going to check this one out, and it is great. This one stars uh, Sophia Black D'Elia. Uh, the only other thing I'd seen her in was Project Almanac, but she has done a few other movies. Emily Tipton. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly's in there in a, in a small role. Michael Kelly from House of Cards and Person of Interest. And this one... Wait, there's one more guy. Plays... No, you know, Michael Kelly plays their father. Uh, Colson Baker, that's, that's Machine Gun Kelly's real name. And this one, sort of, light, they're just going about their lives. They live with their dad. He's a single father. He's, he's, uh, no, he's not a single father. He's separated. Um, his wife is out of town. And then she's on her way back and gets stopped at the airport because there's this outbreak that's happened. And... It's, it's kind of timely where everything, it starts spreading all over the world. It's rumored to have come from China, maybe, or somewhere else. And everyone starts getting quarantined, and this whole town gets sectioned off. And it turns out that there's this... Um, and Michael Kelly, who's the father of one of the girls, Sophia Black Lee in the movie, is also her teacher at high school. And he starts talking about the, the bot worm, bot fly. Where, like these worms or flies, they burrow into a person's brain and wreak havoc. Well, this one ends up being this this little worm that travels travels through um, blood and fluids and stuff like that, and that's how it infects another person. And it takes them over, it drives them insane, it turns them into like fast moving zombies, kind of like from Twenty Eight Days Later. And that it's sort of like, and there's these kids that want to have this big house party, so they have the party, and then the, someone who's there gets sick and starts wreaking havoc and spreading the virus and stuff. So it, 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 it spirals out of control from there. So I'll, li I'll leave it at that, because you can probably see where it's going, but I'll just leave it to your imagination. So that was a fly roll. Number one, we have a film from 2007, another one from the After Dark film, Horror Fest films, and my personal favorite of them is called The Deaths of Ian Stone. And this one stars Mike Vogel, uh, Christina Cole, Jamie Murray, and I'll give you the main people you'd recognize, but uh, Mike Vogel plays Ian Stone. He's a hockey player, and on his way home from a game where he just lost, he gets stopped at the tracks, and there's this mysterious creature he sees goes out to investigate, and the thing ends up trapping him on the train tracks, and he gets thrown by a train. Then all of a sudden he wakes up, and he's got this completely different life. Doesn't remember anything that just happened. And he's working in an office, and his girlfriend is now just a co-worker, and he's involved with this other woman. And it happens a few times where he gets killed, he keeps getting killed, and being shuffled into this plugged into this new life and it's sort of I don't know how much I want to say because it is a significant significant reveal but he ends up being contacted by this older gentleman this older stranger who he thinks is really creepy but he keeps telling me you need to you need to listen to me you need to you need to remember, you need to fight against these things because it's this mysterious, sort of like shadow, misty shadow creatures that are after him. And he doesn't know why. But anytime he gets close to learning why and getting close to this woman who was his girlfriend in a previous iteration, previous life, um, he gets apprehended and gets killed and sort of has his memory wiped and put into this other life. But there's always these remnants of his previous lives and so he has to figure out what the hell is going on and where do I know her from why do I have this connection to her so that's where I'll stop Deaths of Ian Stone okay so that is it for this list I hope you enjoyed it and like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one because I built up several several more lists as I was hoping all right